where Glen Campbell is heading. Beginning June 7th, he is going to be at the Glen Campbell Good Time Theater in Branson, Missouri. He'll be there through December 17th. A great show. He does about 10 or 11 shows per week, so you need to stop by and see one of them. And I imagine he'll be singing something from his newest album, which will be released shortly. The album is called The Boy and Me, here with the title song. Our guest again, Mr. Glen Campbell. I remember not too long ago batting baseballs, boxing with my shadow, climbing trees, climbing walls, yearn to be six feet tall. If I knew then what I know now, I would have been content to play and not to Charlie is sick tonight. Bill Anderson is filling in as my co-host. And we have the great Glenn Campbell on the show. We're very excited to have him here. Uh, Thank you so much. The book, I'm sure you've all seen it. It just came out this week called Rhinestone Cowboy. The life and times, I guess, of Mr. Glenn Campbell. I just asked Bill what was the toughest thing he had to write about in his book. What was the toughest thing for you? Well, why don't you go first? Well, <laughs> no, I, I did up there. Oh no! Well, he, he wrote that. Uh, he wrote that he was a jerk. Mine was very. It was like it was personal. Mm. You know, coming out coming out from, uh, I think the the drugs, alcohol stuff. That was, 
when you get to a certain point where you say, you know, that's the end of the road, you know, uh, I can't keep doing this. I have to stop, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll mention Daryl Strawberry again. I feel so sorry for him. You know what Lord, he's going through. I know what he's going through, exactly. Yeah. But, Is there anything but there's the a book? lot of difference when you have a helper. And uh, I have the Lord Jesus Christ on my side, and I have my wife Kim on my side. Yeah. <laughs> it does make a difference. How, how many years were you in, involved with the drugs and the alcohol? Uh, well, alcohol, you know, up, uh, from the time I was 21 or before <laughs> until uh, seven years ago. Oh but not, I, you know, when I started in the business working the clubs, I couldn't drink because I was only 15 years old when I started. So therefore, I didn't get the habit early. That, that, the really heavy drinking came after the television show and after Gentle on My Mind. Uh, Gentle on My Mind, by the time I get to Phoenix and the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour app happened within like a year. Mm -hmm. uh, the Summer Brothers Smother Show, I should say, hosting that. And uh, everywhere you go, there's a cocktail party. And you... You know, here, have this. Boy, here, try this one, Glenn. Try this wine, Glenn. This is the real kind of a sewer, as Mel Tillis would say. <laughs> I mean, and you try it. You know, and it got to be more and more. It was the same thing. Marijuana did not do nothing. I, I guess go, <clears throat> I went to sleep. Uh, but, you know, when the cocaine, it was the same thing. Try this, you'll like it, you know. Try it, you'll like it. It's not a good saying, I don't think. <laughs> no, no, I don't <laughs> not think Not so. for me, anyway. Yeah, well, and it, that's how you get caught up in well, it. Well, you know, the thing is, is that you still, and, and, and back then, had the image of being southern gentleman, boy-next-door kind of guy. W what were you like when you were under the influence? I was a nice southern gentle boy from d You yeah, no, were <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to think I was. Uh, no, I'm, okay. I'm so blessed and so thrilled that I can be here with a smile on my face talking about it. I can be, oh, no, it was so terrible. Uh -huh. It was so terrible. But when, when you're forgiven and you know it, I said, mm -hmm. this has been, I was telling you outside what, what it was about being able to talk about it. It's like getting it out even more. Writing the book was like the cleansing. There's a word for it, but I forgot it. It's like cleaning out the trough mm -hmm. and putting in new water. You know, uh, it's just amazing what it does for you. I couldn't help but think as I read your book, I met your mom and dad one night at the old Ryman Auditorium. Yeah. Did your mom and dad know how far down you had really sunk during no, those days? No, they didn't. I don't think I would have written a book if, if mom and dad were alive. I lost mom the last day of 1991. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really just, I don't think I would have written it or put it out until, until then. In fact, I never even thought of doing it. It never even crossed my mind. Uh, my children. Some of them, what do you say about me in the book and all this? God love them, and they know who they are, and I love them. Uh, I didn't say anything about them. I just said I've got children, you know. I didn't say one, one way or the other, you know. Uh, they're all beautiful and wonder, not wonderful, and I love them. But I said things about my life in the book. It's my life from the time I remember when Jane, my younger sister, was born, and I was three years and seven months old. I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember when great-grandpa Jesse Campbell died. When I was, he died in, when I was five years old in 1941. And uh, so I, the book is fairly accurate. Is, is there anything looking at it now? Now that it's out, people have uh, responded to it. Is there anything that you wish you had not put in it that you put in it? Well, y yes and no. You know, I, I stripped it down to, you know, for the pages just about as fine as I could cut it, you know, without getting into maybes or whatever. And I didn't want that. I wanted it to be the way it was, you know, maybe a little lighter than the way it really was because you can't put your feelings down. The papers don't have feelings and words don't have feelings and it's hard to get that part in there. Mm -hmm. But the book is, yes, I'd, I'd, I'd authenticate <laughs> <that's good. laughs> the well, accuracy you know, of, of the We've got to talk about your relationship with Tanya because... No, we don't. As, as you said, yes, we do. Yes, you we said do. we got to do that. You yes, can talk about do. it. Oh, it, it is my duty to the fans of country music, Glenn. Uh, I, I know it's tough, and you said it so well in the book. You, said, you gave the impression that it was frustrating because this relationship was 15 months of your life mm -hmm. as compared to the years that you've sold millions of records and entertained people, mm -hmm. and I can understand your frustration with that. Um, you call the relationship a, a poisoned relationship. Why would you say that? Well, it was a, you, you do drugs and alcohol to the extent that I was doing them or anybody does that's even taking them. Ca they say it's casual. I was a casual user. Mm -hmm. Sure you are. Uh, 
It's poison. Your life's poisoned. Uh, the relationship was poisoned. You know, it's like uh, two hogs at the trough, they fight. You know, no, 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 it doesn't matter either. I, I, I'm from the country, and I've, that's one of my jobs was to slop the hog. It didn't matter how much slop, we call it slop, food. Mm -hmm. you had, it doesn't matter how much, excuse me, I'll use a politically correct term. No matter how much hog food that you had <laughs> in the trough, them hogs would still root each other out and fight over it. Yeah. Well, that's just kind of the way it was. Uh, not necessarily, I'm not talking about drugs with Tanya, I'm talking about the, the, our our personalities. We could talk and we could laugh and it was it was fun. But boy, I tell you, it, when it was bad, it was bad. Mm -hmm. Was there anything good you think that came out of that relationship? Yeah, it made Glenn Campbell clean up his act. You know, I really. I mean, because that I'd, I'd never been through that before in my life. And the way I grew up with the, with the big family, I, I needed to have family, you know. I needed to have and that's why, you know, and I'm blessed now. I'm sitting here right now, and I can tell the story. I live to tell about it, and I got a family. I got a wife and three wonderful little kids. I have three, four, five more beautiful older kids. I got eight all together. I've been blessed. It says in the Bible, the Lord said a man is blessed if his quiver is full. I think my quiver is full, and I'm going <laughs> to get my bow out now. I, you know, let me tell you, I... <laughs> To, to meet your wife on a couple of occasions, Kim, and obviously you had not written the book, and I didn't know at the time what she had been through with you the first part of your marriage, and she stuck with you when you were still trying to get off the drugs and alcohol. Do you wonder to this day why she stayed through all of this trauma? Yeah, has the money. No! no. <laughs> I, wait a minute, I got my sense of humor on tonight. I haven't lost my sense of humor. Kim stayed on it because she saw something in Glen Campbell that obviously I didn't see. And we had a, oh, just a beautiful little boy, Cal. He's, he'll be 11 years old on the 19th. Happy birthday, Cal. I'll be the first to tell you. Yeah. 11 years old. Happy birthday, Cal. Thanks. And he won the Little League batting championship last year. He hit 800. Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was through, through the other, the, the, there's no errors on the Little League clubs, right? But every hit, it was just, he, he's a lot of fun. He can and, replace Daryl Strawberry. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, yeah, the guy that took his place had two home runs the first night. You believe that? God love him. Anyway, Cal, and we had such a beautiful little child. And yeah, Kim didn't drink, didn't smoke, didn't cuss. She just didn't do any of that. And she lifted me out. You know, you, you need a helper. You need a helper. Oh, boy, I tell you, if two drunks will never save each other. But there's got to be somebody there that, it's like two people in a swimming hole that can't swim. One has to be able to swim to lift the other one up. And that's the way Kim is. I think I'm so lucky to have Kim as my wife at this point in my life. And I hope, and I hope it's forever because she's a wonderful gal and we, we have a great relationship. We can talk. And, and, well, and I'll tell the folks this, you gotta, in the book, Glenn got really brave and he allowed Kim to write her own chapter of, of what she went through and how it came out to be such a, a wonderful relationship. Did that worry you at all that she had free reign on her own chapter? No, I didn't, I didn't even edit it. I, I let her do it and let Tom write it and... I did the same thing with Jimmy Bowen. Maybe I shouldn't have done that with Bowen. No, I don't at, think so. I, I had to, think no, I'm kidding. You, you have to know Bowen, folks. You gotta know the Bowen. The musicians, they, are, they, know, they know that one. They know Bowen. Oh. Uh, but the Kim, this, Kim is walking with the Lord and it's just, oh, it's so marvelous, really. So she's like an angel to me. You are, I mean, you're a different man. You really are. I, and the, the book, the Rhinestone Cowboy, I'll tell you folks, you gotta read it to understand how far someone can go down, but how high you can come yes. back up. That, like, Kim told me, she said, honey, I think the point of the book is just to show, show you what God can do. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. All righty. I gotta ask you one thing. In, in your repertoire of all of your songs, are there any of your songs now with your new life, your new approach to life? Are there some of your old songs you won't sing anymore? Uh, well, thank I think the Lord has been guiding me for a long time. I still like to sing. You know, being a musician, I like chords with nice chord progressions, nice melodies. So I look at it from that standpoint. Yeah, uh, Phoenix will always have a place in my heart. So will Wichita Lineman. Mm -hmm. uh, Galveston, 
Honey, come back where you belong to only me. I, I hadn't done that for a while. I'm putting I want to live back in the act. Remember the, mm -hmm. the John, John, Latter, D. John D. Latimer song? Yeah. I want to live, live and let live. I want everything this life has to give. <laughs> well, see, I want to smile recorded. and be happy with you. Oh, I had a big hit with that song. No, but you never recorded the, the, the bad songs that you would be hesitant to right, sing. Right, exactly. Yeah. And the, the new stuff, uh, Gentle on My Mind, that song knocked me out. I don't care what anybody says about Gentle on My Mind. You know, see, I've, I've had preachers write things about Gentle on My Mind. You know, well, you know what I mean? You're staying there with a sleeping bag behind somebody's couch. Uh-oh. Boy, what a great line. What, what a, <laughs> it's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. Kind of says... What Gentle on My Mind is about. And old John Hartford, he just hit on something there that he was did. just magical. In fact, will you sing that song for us later on in the show? Well, I would love to. I will do that.